Rangers in their final huddle before the start of the ball game. And as usual, it is full. This is about as tough a ticket as you can find in college football every year. And, and uh, it certainly, this year, is no exception. They split the stadium right down the middle. 50% of the seats going to Oklahoma and 50% of the seats going to Texas. Texas is the home team of this year. It was Oklahoma last year. And it's a big ball game for so many reasons, as we alluded to it. Bragging rights, recruiting. I was going to say, recruiting is really the key because Oklahoma spends so much time in Texas recruiting. In fact, about half of their team comes from Texas. They need to beat Texas to keep them coming to Oklahoma. All right, Herky Walls is in place as the deep man, number 11. He played a prime role in Texas' 14-7 victory over the Hurricanes of Miami. Made a big catch. The barefooted kicker for Oklahoma is Michael Keeling. He is a junior out of Dallas, and we're ready to go. The officials are split. Three big eight, three southwest. The referee is Ken Faulkner. I'll give you the rest of them in a little bit. Ball game's underway. Number 76, and it is fumbled by Texas. Sooners get it on the Texas 16. Ronnie Walker, the short man, has the ball ricochet off his chest, and Oklahoma has come up with it. As we, as, as we watch it again from the end zone, the wind caught the ball, and you can see Walker, he did not break the, the flight of the ball with his hands and hit his chest, comes right out of there, and an Okie falls on it, number 41, Chet Winters. What a break for Oklahoma. Uh, Stewart, Stewart's 41. 41. Then right. came down on the kick coverage team to get it, and the Oklahoma Sooners are in business on the opening moment of the ball game from the Texas 16. Phelps gives to the fullback Wilson, and Stanley Wilson goes to the six, and that was almost a late hit right there by a trailing Texas man. The ball is put down right about the six, and Wilson got close to 10 yards on the carry. It may be close enough for the change. If it is, Keith, there okay. they come. Let me give you the officials, Frank, before okay. we get too far into it. Ken Faulkner out of the Southwest, the referee. Umpires Bob Corsaris. Buddy Coleman out of the Southwest, the linesman. Big 8, line judge Sam Mapis. Field judge Southwest, George Slatke. Back judge Virgil Deering. There's a little heat on the fellows wearing the striped shirt today in this ball game too. It really is. They are, do a tremendous job, though, of and a service to college football. It's first and goal to go for Oklahoma inside the Texas Six. Double tight in alignment for the Sooners. He rides it off to the second man. Chet Winters momentum carries into the goal line, and the horns stop him just short. Chet Winters, who has an outstanding blocker, getting a chance to carry the ball, and that surge almost got him into the end zone. As Keith just said, it was a tremendous surge by the left side of the Oklahoma line. One thing Oklahoma had planned to do in this ball game, strangely enough, is run right at Texas. Run at their big tackles and try to break into the linebacker area. Oklahoma trying to exercise an early opportunity. The handoff goes again. The winners and Jeff goes over the top. Touchdown sooner. Touchdown. You're going to see winners number 40 going right over the top of the left side of the line, right over behind Graham and Crouch, the left tackle and left guard, twisting and turning, breaking the goal line, playing for the touchdown. Healing out of Phelps' hole for the extra point. It's good. With 13 minutes and 59 seconds to play in the first quarter, the Texas Longhorns recover at o Oklahoma. Recovers the Texas fumble and takes it in for the seven points. State Fairgrounds and Oklahoma will kick it off again. The deep people, again this time, Herky Walls, the deep man. To his left is Johnny Walker, 
And to his right, Jitter Fields. It was Walker who fumbled. The wind is treacherous. It swirls around the cotton bowl. It caught that last kickoff and just drifted it around, flopped it around, and Walker didn't come up with it. And the Sooners threw it did, and uh, Oklahoma stuck it in the end zone in three plays using 57 seconds. Keeling will kick it off. Now 171 consecutive games in which Oklahoma has scored. That's a remarkable record. This time it's Herky Walls at the goal line. Oh, what a hit. Ball comes loose, but he's down. He's down. It'll be Texas football at the 10. Rick McIver starts at quarterback. McIver, a junior out of Fort Stockton. Carl Robinson, a 208-pound fullback. Jan Jones, a 204-pound tailback. Maurice McCloney. Transferred from Nebraska to wide man and Donnie Little last year's winning quarterback is now at a wide receiver position for the orange shirted Texas Longhorn. They are very close to their 11 for the first snap of the ball game with the Sooners out on top seven to nothing. They give it a jam Jones out of Youngstown Ohio runs it up to about the 14. The big guys up front for Texas are just that big to 246 pounds. Joe Sharon weighs in at 255 pound guard. Mike Babb, the center at 265. Duck Dawson, a sophomore at 260 right guard. Right tackle Terry Tosh, 266 pounds. And the tight end is Big Lawrence Sampleton, 6'6, 234. Second down, call it about seven from the 14. Jam Jones again runs into traffic, gets it up to the 18. And so they'll be looking at third down and short. Defensively for Oklahoma, John Truitt, the man who recovered the fumble at defensive end, Bobby Slater, Johnny Lewis, Rick Bryant, Steve Whaley, linebackers Tom Benson, Jackie Ship, Sanjay Drain, Hayworth uh, Walker, and Lowell, the secondary, on third down and three. McIver gives to Jones, first down Longhorn. Good blocking on the right side of the Texas line. Dawson, Tausch. And Drain, the strong safety, brings him down. A look at it from the end zone. Watch the blocking on the left side of your screen. You'll see it's a cross block and play with a fullback, Robinson, leading right up the hole. Jones, number 24, comes through, pulling his legs through, getting extra yardage. Finally gets tackled there by Drain, 33. And the horns now move it impressively once they get a handle on it. The ball is up at the 27. The ball is getting breaks contact on the first man that hit him finally Jackie ship brings him down Tom Benson the other linebacker had a hold of him couldn't hold on and he runs it up to the 33 let's set the stage for Texas Keith they're operating from the I formation something a little bit different from last year trying to get a lot of power behind that very strong experienced offensive line you're looking at second down and a short four as McCloney comes wide and McIver gives it off to the short man out of the I formation. The fullback Carl Robinson, junior from Temple, Texas, and he's got another Longhorn first down. Looks like Texas kind of got their jaw set a little bit after that. Milwaukee still in the must-win situation. Ball goes to Jam Jones. He's a senior and hoping he can make it through a season without being hurt. And he again picks up a pretty good chunk of yardage. Now he's carried the ball four times already for 23 yards. He's been averaging in the two games in which he's been healthy about 98 yards a game. We're running at 11.15 to go in the first quarter with the Sooners leading the Horns by a score of 7 to nothing. In case you just got here a little late, Texas fumbled the opening kickoff. Oklahoma stuck at the end zone for a touchdown in three plays from the Texas 16. McIver on a roll on second down and six. Gets away and gets his pass off to the sidelines for Donnie Little. It is incomplete. Coming across in a hurry was Daryl Sonji to help out on the play. What the viewers couldn't see at home and we could see up here was that Donnie Little got in behind the Oklahoma halfback. He was wide open for the touchdown. Let's watch the play. You're going you're gonna to see the collision and his little goes outside of Sonji. He's going to trip right there and falls down. Otherwise, he is wide open for a touchdown. He jumps up even though he went out of bounds. It's legal to come back in. But then number 33, Drain, comes across and deflects the pass incomplete it is third down and six for Texas from their own 44 Mike Iver trying to get it off can't do it 
Cannot do it. John Truitt came from defensive left end to make the tackle for Oklahoma, and Texas will have to punt it. That was a big play for Truitt, who is starting his first game for Oklahoma. Young sophomore playing defensive end. McCobb is going to fake the draw play, which normally will hold the defensive rush, but not the defensive ends. They're coming in hard. Truett, number 41, gets into the backfield and tackles him for the loss, forcing the punt. Goodson now averaging right at 45 yards a kick. High in the air and very short. He shanked it out of bounds. So Oklahoma will get good field position after an 18-yard punt. Kelly Phelps will be in there at quarterback for the Sooners. Stanley Wilson carried on the first scrimmage play. Buster Rhymes, who almost didn't get the start. Jet Winter, the man who carried it twice in the touchdown drive. Bobby Grayson will be the white man alternating with Jim Rockford. They are the messengers on this year's team. Here are the Sooners now, working from their own 43. First down. Oklahoma in white. Give it away to Wilson. Stanley Wilson over the left side is finally written down up around the 49. He picked up six yards. Up front, Oklahoma is also big and quick. Let's set them for you. Elbert Graham is up there at 267. Left tackle, Terry Crouch at 275 guard. Center, Bill Bechtel, 245. Don Key, 246. He started every game since he came to Oklahoma. Lindell Byford, 270 pound tackle. And Jeff Williams, 225. 21 at the tight end position. And it's Williams wide to the right side this time, and we've got contact along the line of scrimmage. Big Kenneth Sims involved in it. Looked like the Oklahoma people might have moved a little bit, and that's what it is illegal procedure. So while they make their decision on that, let's set the Texas defense very quickly for you. Eric Holly, Kenny Sims, Doug Schenkel, linebacker and nose guard. Mark Weber at tackle, Kika Diala. Bruce Schultz, 51, a fine linebacker. Jeff Whiting at linebacker. The secondary, the corners of Mike Hatchett and Vance Bedford. The safeties, strong safety Bobby Johnson and a weak safety William Graham. That's a pretty good amount of experience in that Texas secondary this year. In fact, the entire defense has eight seniors starting. Second down and nine. They take it over the left side. The ball squirted loose, but they're going to call him down. Oh, I tell you, they don't have a handle on that confounded thing yet, do they? Got away from Wilson for just a second. Wilson is just a tremendous football player. Number 32, one of the finest runners I think we've seen this year. Obviously, Oklahoma is using a full house backfield, having four runners back there. The quarterback is just as fine a runner as the three running backs. Gives them a real threat against the Texas defense. They need just a little over three yards on third down, and the left side of the Oklahoma line breaks on the count, and there's another illegal procedure call. I'm, uh, Keith, I'm not sure I've seen Oklahoma do this. They must be changing and going on the quick count, something that they've not done this year. As soon as they get set, they're going to come Off out and fire Offense, no third down. All right, backs them up five again. Instead of third and three, they're looking at third and eight. And remember that Texas plays man-for-man -man coverage in the secondary on practically every down. Vance Bedford will be covering the wide receiver. Rockford and Grayson are both in wide now, and Phelps on a draw. Shankle almost got him. He's got an Oklahoma first down. How about that? Tremendous strategy. Oklahoma, is all of you know, is not a passing team. They only throw 12% of the time, so they don't want to throw the ball unless they really have to. They came in this game. Barry Switzer told me we're going to be patient. We're going to run up the middle. We're not going to throw unless they give it to us. We're not going to try to force the wide play. Long yardage, draw play, successful, and keeping the drive going. Shankle had a hold of it, but Kelly broke the tackle and got his first down at the Texas 45. The ball is just inside. 45, you've got 8.20 to go. First quarter, Sooners lead 7 0. Wilson, the fullback. Coming into this ball game, Stanley had picked up 223 yards on 29 carries, and he just ripped off another big gainer. He's carried four times now for 31 yards. He picked up nine. And the play is this designed right at the All-American tackle Sims and Don Key, number 60. Keith did a sensational job. He took Sims all the way to the inside, opened up the gap. 
He is a fellow who started as a freshman at guard, and he started every game that he's been there. Wilson again over the left side gets the first down. The surge carries him to about the 33. So the big junior out of Carson, California. He's not all that big, actually. He weighs 196 pounds, but what speed he generates after one step. In addition to his speed, he's got those strong, piston-like legs, and we'll get some good shots of him later on in the game. We're watching those legs work and break tackles. There he is, number 32. Look, he's against Texas, he's had practically a 10-yard average for two years. On first down, the ball goes to Chet Winters. Winters over the left side, keeps on rambling down inside the 25, close to a first down, but there is a penalty flag on the field. Let's see about that one. It's Oklahoma procedure. That's the third flag against them, and all three have been procedure calls. One thing we should mention, Keith, I think, is Oklahoma has tremendous quickness. You mentioned this earlier. They have probably as quick a football team as it has been in America in a long, long time. And they are getting the jump on the Texas defense. That's very obvious. An illegal formation, offense, six men on the line, first down. Book says you've got to have seven up there. You can spread them as wide as you want, but uh, you've got to have seven up there. Weldon Ledbetter now is in at fullback, replacing Stanley Wilson. They give it outside to Buster Rhymes. His first carry gets one block coming around the corner, but he needed more. Jet Winters was out there, and Winters put a pretty good block on uh, Bobby Johnson, but uh, the pursuing linebacker got him. The penalties certainly hurt the Oklahoma wishbone offense. As we look at the clock, just under six minutes, just over six minutes to play. Penalties put taken right out of their running game and the percentage plays that they so much convinced. Check in for a moment with Steve Davis. Keep on the sideline. Stanley, Stanley Wilson right now is out with a back injury. He'll be back in. Also, Oklahoma has had not trying to call, change the play at the sidelines. What they're trying to do is get their play run. They're having problems with it. Well, sometimes the, the noise factor precludes uh, some of the outside people from hearing it but most of the people who have been involved in the procedure accepting uh, of course that uh, illegal formation but the two previous procedure calls came from interior linemen Keith when you got an inside play call those linemen actors they want to hit oh, somebody <laughs> they want to come off that ball can't blame them it is third down and a long seven outside it goes to Ryan Phelps delayed just as long as he possibly could. Rhymes trying to stretch for his first down. I don't know if he got to the marker. He's close. The, the risk of that downfield pitch is something else, but it's reasonable in that situation since it was third and long. Again, Texas did not, Oklahoma did not throw Keith on a passing down. One of the reasons that Buster Rhymes wasn't able to stretch too much was that big uh, linebacker and nose guard, Doug Shankle. 222 pounds laid the helmet on him. Shankle's having an excellent year. Much better than last year. Look at that. How close it is. They'll go. They'll go. Very definitely. And they'd like to have Wilson back in there. But they got a new ball back in the ball game. Remember that. Led better. Look at the Oklahoma rushing record. Since 1950, how many times they've been in the top 10 or led the nation in rushing? They are known for it and feared for it. I bet you there were some tattered shirt tails around the Oklahoma practice field this week, too. Oh, boy. They've been concentrating on holding on that football in every way that they can. It's concentration, Keith. You and I both know that. It's strictly habit concentration. Fourth and inches. Phelps, whoa, look out. I mean, he took a wallop. I don't know if he made it or not. It's all where the referee spots the ball. I doubt if they'll give it to it. It was some hit. No, they're not going to get it. I don't think so. They're putting it on the line, Keith. They spotted it right on the line. I believe he may be an inch too short. It's going to be within an inch. I don't know who it was. I couldn't tell exactly who it was that hit him. It looked like one of those big linebackers uh, might have popped him or possibly Sims. Could, sounds like a middle linebacker, Shankle. No, they didn't make it. Jim Garner among 
among those on the sidelines involved in the emotion of this afternoon. So the Texas Longhorn, the defensive bastion, asserts itself with a big hit. They get the football at 546 to play in the first quarter. Both from Shreveport, Louisiana, our director, Andy Sedaris, tells And a again. lot of good football players come out of Shreveport. I saw a column on that the other day. That's a tremendous number of athletes out of there. Here's a great fellow from Youngstown, Ohio. Jam Jones running for a Texas first down. All the way out to the 46, he picked up 18 yards on the carry. And again, good, solid blocking up front for him. And one thing that you'll notice about Jones, once he runs out of blocking, watch that he BYOB becomes your own blocker. What a tremendous picture that was. Lowering the shoulder, breaking tackles, keeping his feet working. He's not going down. Beautiful run. First down horns just outside the 45. MacArthur gives it to Jones again. When you got a hot hand, play it. And Jam gets what appears to be two out to the 48. Nine carries now for A.J., and he's got 50 yards. Bob Slater, tackle made the stop. Bob Slater's just a sophomore. Very fine prospect. Watch him whip the blocker, whip the second block from the back in the backfield, comes across and makes the tackle right for a short game. Bob Slater, fine sophomore tackle from Oklahoma. Second down, eight for the Sooners, were, uh, for Texas, rather, at their own 48. Sooners put a four-man front. McIver on a roll to throw it, gets it off, has a man, Robinson, out of the backfield. The fullback has a first down for Texas and then some as he goes down inside the Oklahoma 25. Marion Walker, a sophomore out of LaPorte, brought him down. 28-yard pickup. A bootleg pass. You're going to see the quarterback. A bootleg where you fake backs in different directions really confuses the linebackers. And the fullback, Robinson, comes wide open in the flat. The reason the linebacker's not there, he took the fake of Jones going in the other direction. Good call, good execution. They mark the ball just inside the 25 for Texas. First down. Robinson to the 21. Better part of four yards on that carry. One thing that uh, Ron Coleman, who's the new offensive coordinator at uh, Texas, played for me at the University of Missouri, and he was telling me that Robinson is better than just a blocking fullback. He's a good runner and a good pass receiver, and we've already seen evidence of that today. Final seconds of the first quarter with Oklahoma leading 7 to nothing in Texas. Trying to put it in the end zone themselves. Donnie Little comes to the left, McClony to the right. Jam Jones, the eye back, over the 20 to the 19. They'll be looking at third and short. Two linebackers for Oklahoma, Thomas Benson, sophomore from Ardmore, Jackie Ship, sophomore from Stillwater. Very active in that Sooner defense so far today, and time has run out in quarter number one. So after 15 minutes, we've got just what we thought we'd have, as Steve Davis put it, a legalized street fight with Oklahoma leading Texas 7 and up. Open up. All right, we go into the second quarter of play at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Oklahoma leading Texas by a score of 7 to nothing. It is third down and four for the Longhorns. The ball is at the Oklahoma 19. Little in motion. McIver on a roll. Nothing to it. John Truitt was over there, 41 for Oklahoma. Truitt's not but about 200 pounds, but he had real quickness to pull McIver down on that play. But again, I note that Ship's presence is felt as well. Linebacker. The coaches at Oklahoma feel that Ship and Benson, both sophomores, both from the state of Oklahoma, have great promise. Interesting, though, Frank, that uh, Brian and Slater, the two tackles, lead the team in tackle. Here is a field goal try of 34 yards by Raul Allegra. And it is good. And Texas is on the scoreboard. So Allegra hits one from 34 
And we've got ourselves a 7 to 3 ball game as we begin the second quarter of play and the numbers off the first quarter of the year. Well, the numbers reveal just what we expected. Two very fine football teams that can come back. Adversity doesn't bother them. Texas came right back after fumbling and giving Oklahoma an easy touchdown. But you see they're practically even. One key play, the fumble by Texas, setting up the Oklahoma touchdown. Two fine teams giving great effort. Now the Longhorns will kick it off to Oklahoma. The deep people will be Alvin Ross, 34, Rod Pegues, 14. Ross from Aurora, Illinois, and Pegues from Gainesville, Texas. Ethan, it's amazing how these good football teams can bounce right back after a big mistake that cost them an easy touchdown. Texas showed a lot of class to me. Bebo, right there. <laughs> He's just a temporary Bebo, I'm told. He's okay. waiting for the young one to get a little bit older, and they're going to replace him with one they have got in some farm outside of Austin right now. Not pure enough. Huh? Not pure enough for something. <laughs> they didn't say. <laughs> Allegra hits it. And it's Pegues bobbling it, and finally it goes into the end zone. I guess he didn't touch it, so it'll be a touchback. I think almost came down on top of his noggin. He that was could have been disastrous could because have. he slipped the, his feet just as he's going to catch the ball. His feet went right out in the bundle. Let's watch it again. You can watch his feet go right out from up under him. Mm. Goodness gracious. And he's, he lucky, down, he's lucky. He's lucky. down on his head, Frank. Yeah. It's trouble, isn't it? Yes, it is. The ball it could obviously touches the ball before it touched. Now, once it touched the goal line, it's dead ball. Once it broke the goal line plane and touched the ground, it's dead. Automatic is touchback. And Barry Switzer took a deep sigh oh, of relief. And every Oklahoma fan. First down, Sooners 20. Check winner. Chet getting to carry the ball more today, I think, than he did in the USC ball, in which we saw them. Runs it out across the 25, close to the 27. That's going to be a first down. There's Wilson again. What a football player. Stanley Wilson, Jr., against Texas when. The Oklahoma was trailing 10 to nothing last year. He carried the ball enough to put Oklahoma ahead in the fourth quarter. And this is what they're trying to do again. Run right at the Texas defense. From the 31. Wilson hit at the line of scrimmage. Stepping in to make the tackle number 60. For the Texas Longhorns, the weak linebacker Jeff Lighty. There are some of the scores now beginning to trickle in as Michigan State gets out early over Michigan. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10. North Carolina going against Wake Forest without Kelvin Bryant. He's gone for the year. That was a tough break to lose oh, the ball carrier. Leading scorer in the nation. Just an outstanding player and losing with a knee injury. That makes coaches and fans just sick. Time call. That's the Texas band, and the Sooner band is just down the way from them. And they do contribute a lot to the overall ambiance of this rather spectacular event in Dallas every year. Second down and 10 now after the timeout, and it goes to Rhymes, and Rhymes tries it on the right side and loses a yard. Texas defense adjusting to whatever they weren't doing in the first quarter. They're getting a little bit better now. Beating the blocks, going for the play. That's Barry Switzer, the winningest football coach in America today, percentage wise. What a great coach he is. Good friend of mine, played for me and coached for me. Third down and about 12, they go to Wilson. And Kenneth Sims is right there. Number 77. Well, I know the fans are asking, why won't Oklahoma throw on third and 10? They just don't want to put the ball in the air. They're not a passing team. They spend very little time passing in practice. They do it only as a surprise. That's uh, not an uncommon posture around here at this point, a prayerful posture. <laughs> <laughs> Snap to Keeling is good. Kick is away toward Walls. Good kick. 
Balls backs up a little bit, gets a little help on the corner, and he is tripped and goes out of bounds. Up short of the 23. That was a 50-yard punt, and Jones knocked him out of bounds. So you've got an even 12 minutes to play in the first half. Texas has the football, and Oklahoma leads on the scoreboard at 7 to 3. 12 minutes to play in the first half. 7 to 3 lead for Oklahoma. The Longhorns, who had an impressive march, wound up with a 34 yard field goal by Allegra. With a football now, just short of their own 23. McIver gives it to Johnny Walker. And Walker bangs his way for about eight yards. He is a sophomore, 204 pounder out of Killeen, Texas. One thing that uh, Texas has done has been alternating their tailbacks. The frequency with which a tailback carries the football uh, in the I formation, you can just watch Walker, a fresh man, coming into the ball game and just barreling his way for a nine yard gain. You have Mike Luck in at fullback, a 200 pound sophomore from Houston for Texas. Go back to Walker. He is hit behind the line of scrimmage. And the man that did it was number 90. That's Johnny Blake, the nose guard. And they put him away up around the 35, but he got just enough for the first down. I think that what we're seeing, and it gives us a hint of what might we might have in store for us, the Texas offensive line is controlling those young sophomores on the Oklahoma defense. Now, they weren't early. Now, that's right, a change. First down, Horns just short of the 35. That's Walker. Ball comes loose. Did they call him down or it's Oklahoma's ball? Texas turns it over. That's the second turnover and Steve Whaley is the man. With Sanji coming through to pick it up. One thing that coaches always fear is putting these young Fresh sophomore players in the ball game, and that's what happened. He was fighting for extra yardage and didn't protect the football. One thing that you learn with experience, you protect the football when you're in traffic. And the Sooners now in business at the Texas 35. Oh, Chet Winters runs into a couple of oak trees. He got maybe two. Texas defensive front now. Sims is 276.5. Weber is 6'1, 240. When Shanko steps in there, he's a six footer at 222. Kika Diala, 6'1, 235. And Eric Colley, 6'5, 225. Second down and nine. Phelps rides it off, keeps it. And Hatchet comes up to hit him at the 30. It is third down and a short six, long five for Oklahoma. Phelps coming down the line. He gives it outside to Winters. And Winters is short of his first down. I'll tell you, Kelly Phelps kept that football just as long as he could possibly keep it. Bobby Johnson, the strong safety, came up, made him unload it. And Winters is short of the first down. One thing that you'll notice when you play against the University of Texas, their defensive backs are going to support at the line of scrimmage. And you're going to see right there number 28, Bobby Johnson knocking him out of bounds. Isn't that a, the primary key in defense in the wishbone? Yes, your defensive backs have got the support at the line of scrimmage if, and get involved. Otherwise, they'll control the ball on you. Michael Keeling from 44 yards, a field goal try. The kick is a knuckle ball and not good. Not good. Jam Jones is back in there at tailback with Mike Luck staying at fullback, and Rick McIver sets the Longhorns ready to go from their 27th first down. Give it to Jones. Not much. Freddie Akers alternating his tailbacks to keep fresh men in the ball game. They're about the same size, look a lot alike the way they carry the ball. One thing is experience. Yes. Jam Jones has been around for four years and he's a quality football player. AJ's carried 11 times, 54 yards in the ball game. Second down and eight. From the 29, McIver again goes to Jones. 
It's up to about uh, the 32. That'll make it third down and five. Penn State leading Boston College. The Nittany Lions ranked second in the nation. Carolina scored the same as you saw a while ago. Michigan now has taken the lead over Michigan State by two. And Clemson leading Virginia. Watch for that Clemson Kentucky game last week. Tigers didn't do much in the second half. Connecticut leading Lehigh. Lehigh has been a surprise. They jumped on Delaware. Third and five. McIver on a keeper. Fumbles it. Oklahoma's going to come up with it. That is the third Texas turnover. Rick Bryan. The team and tackled, wrapped those big strong arms around him, and the ball came loose when he squeezed. That, that's what happens sometimes when you watch the quarterback carrying the football. McCobb is not much of an option quarterback, but let's watch him go down the line, see if he's got the ball protected. No, he doesn't have the ball tucked in. Brian is right there and recovers it. Another Oklahoma opportunity. Wilson, left side. Takes it from about 35 down for a couple of yards. Sooners haven't uh, in that lost a, a fumble yet. That's really a change. But let's let's go back. We've just got a replay. The Texas defense had to come out and stop Oklahoma after a fumble just a moment ago. Now they're back in that same position, relative to the same spot on the field. Let's see if they, they can do it. They are a tremendous defensive football team. You have 7:55 to play in the first half. You can't keep that defense out there all day. No, it is a cool day. It's about 76, 75 degrees. Second down and eight. That's Wilson again, and Wilson is caught behind the line of scrimmage. Eric Colley, number 93, defensive left in, reached in there and got a hold of him, and down goes Wilson. Loss on the play. Back to him. There's, there's Oklahoma. 25 rushing plays for 90 yards. As you can tell, that is far, far, far below their seasonal average. Give Texas defense much credit. Alvin Ross is now in there at a halfback spot in relief of Chet Winters. He's a freshman out of Illinois. Kelly Phelps to throw it. He gets his pass off. Uh-oh, that should get a flag it does. It gets a flag against Hatchet. Hatchet shoved Bobby Grayson. It, you know, Keith, it was so unnecessary. The ball had been way overthrown. Let's watch Grayson go down. Of course, if we remember back in the back, Phelps is being rushed. He's just scrambling. He turns and throws the ball. It's way overthrown. The ball is way over the head. He just pushes him down, and it is Defense clearly is highest interference. interference. Automatic first down. John Haynes was the uh, Texan that was harassing the Oklahoma quarterback. Kelly got away from him. Then there was the Texas mistake downfield. And again, as soon as the first down at the Longhorn 26. Seven minutes to play in the first half. Sooners leading seven to three and trying to get some more here as they give it up to the middle to Stanley Wilson. And Wilson goes close to the 22 for about five yards. One thing that Texas relies on with their defense is their offensive defensive line putting a rush. There's the NCAA rankings in rushing. Allowing on 400 yards a game. The total defense, 1970. And scoring defense, boy, they are good. They are really good. Three categories, they lead the nation. Texas defense we're talking about. Mike Weddington has come in at tight end for Oklahoma. Chet Winters has come back at right half, replacing Ross. They break the bone this time and uh, put Winters up on a wing. Put him in motion now. And Phelps rolls that way. Dumps it off to Rhymes. Buster with some real estate to run on. Goes for a first down. At the Texas 13, Lighting ran him out of bounds. Nine yards. Beautiful execution. You don't expect Oklahoma to throw that style of pass, but they did to the flare back as the receivers were covered downfield, and Rhymes took it in for the first down. The thing that made that one work was the break in the bone, putting winners up there and sending him deep, and he took the uh, corner man with him. Linebacker could not get out and cover Rhymes as Texas plays man for man. First down Sooners, Texas 13. Up front, Wilson. To the one. Hatchet finally locked his leg. 
this 32 Stan Wilson can actually explode better than any football player I've seen in a long time. Watch him just keep going. Graham, number 36, is a third leading tackler, and he has a hard time getting him down with help. Let's call it the two. That's 14 carries for 62 yards now for Wilson. First and goal just inside the two. Second man. Winner. Short. That winner flies pretty well, doesn't he? He can leap over the offensive line. One thing I think they go in the left is the reason that, uh, for the reason that Winners is a junior, the most experienced back other than the fullback right up the middle, uh, is the only play that they can give to Wilson. Weddington is out now, and Williams is back at tight end. Three tackles in there for the Sooners. Oh, that's a struggle. Wilson got to the goal line, and he got it. Late call, but it was a matter of whether or not Texas could stand him up or whether he could fall forward, and he fell forward just enough. The second effort, the great backs had it, particularly in, in down and close to the goal line. They had a great effort. The surge that breaks the goal line plane, and that's what Wilson did. And as Boomer Sooner echoes across the fairground, the extra point try is up. And good. And so the Oklahoma Sooners has opened up now a 14 to 3 lead. Five minutes and 12 seconds to play in the first half. When you Michael Keeling is in the punt now for Oklahoma. Got some heat this time, but gets it off, and it's a beauty. It's going to go into the end zone, maybe. It does. So you've got 11, a minute and 11 seconds to play in the first half after a 51-yard punt. That thing started to wobble a little bit when it hit. And almost died down there. It looked like he was going to bounce right up in the air and stop on the, right close to the goal line. Sam Skeet was in the, the Texas lineup trying to rush the kicker, so he is all right. Things are pretty quiet, I guess, up at the Pitt West Virginia game. If we could just find a way to protect those knees in football, it would be so wonderful. Well, you can't build them up. There's no muscle to work on. First down from the 20, and McIver puts it in the air, incomplete. The pass intended for McCloney, wide receiver, hooking across. The attendance today, 75,587. It is the 36th straight sellout of this game here at the Cotton Bowl. Keith, I, I believe I'm correct in saying this is the first time Texas has been behind this year. And they've got to go to their passing. They'll have to go to it the second half. We'll get a little look at it right here in the two-minute offense. Minute six to play. McIver back. All day. Pass is off and incomplete intended for Jam Jones. And Daryl Sanji is oh. flanking a little because he didn't pick that one off. He threw it right to Sanji. And Sanji is the most experienced, number 16, there he is, the most experienced defensive back that Oklahoma has. He played it perfectly. By playing it perfectly, we mean he backed up, expecting a deep pass, and when the ball is thrown, he breaks in front of him. Watch it. It goes right through his head. Oh, is he mad. Third down and 10 from the 20 for Texas. Again, very good protection. All day, and it's slapped down at the line of scrimmage. Sampleton, the tight end, was dragging across the middle. My goodness, he had all day and half the night and couldn't get it home. Well, that's one thing about the Texas pass offense. I don't think it's quite as sophisticated to take advantage of a drop. There was a three-man rush and five underneath coverage. As we see number 80, Ricky Bryan, getting up and walking off the field under his own power. We're glad of that. He's a great football player. Watch the blocking. You can see that uh, McIver, number 15, the quarterback's going to have all day. Bab, number 54, can pick up leakage. And then, who is that? Number 68, Slayton, knocks the ball down. Deflects it. All right, here's Goodson for the punt. And Hayworth deep for the Sooners. Oh, that snap was high. And there's some heat on him, but he gets it off. It's a high hanger. They're going to let it drop. And the Texas is going to down it at the Oklahoma 39. It was a 41-yard punt, but it hung up there forever. 
Sims is trotting back out into the lineup. We're talking about Kenny Sims, All-American last year, has not been playing good and was taken out of the lineup. It's about 1 o'clock here in Dallas, so let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. I think it's one o'clock. <laughs> I'm not sure. If you don't get any sleep, it's hard to tell you it is. <laughs> Steve Sewell is in there at the left halfback position now, and the ball is given off again to Wilson. Will by Sim picks up about three. Well, he's back in there. I guess they took him out and tried to jack him up a little bit, as we say, Keith. He's going to make a great play. He's all American, awesome football player. Remember this, he's 6'6. Watch him control the block. That's what football is all about. Comes right off the blocker and helps on the tackle. That's all American play. 18, 17, clock running. Sooners leading 14 to 3 and seemingly content. They run it out. Wilson up the middle. He's short of the first down, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So it's 14-3 Oklahoma, and here the Texas coach with Steve Davis, Fred Akers. Coach, what are your impressions first half? Well, uh, we just fumbled too much. The wrong team's doing the fumbling, and we're playing great defense. With the turnovers we had, that scoreboard should look like a pinball machine. It looks like you've been content to run right at Oklahoma. You've had a lot of success in not throwing the ball that much. Well, we're going to have to open up more. I can see that, and we are running the ball pretty well. It's just the fumbles. Thank you, Coach, very much. Freddie Akers, NCAA college football. How do you feel right now? What are your impressions? Well, field position is the key. That's why we're going to defend. I, I hope that they can't take it a long way. I don't think we can take it a long way on. We got to play field position. We're going to defend and hope we can hold on the ball like we did the first 30 minutes. Are you surprised? That's a key. Are you surprised they didn't try to use the long ball? Well, to try to make we, something happen? We, they had a little success early running, and I, then I, then they went to their zone passing game. I. You know, they were, we were expecting deep pass late in the ball game. They tried the short stuff. They're, they're going to throw deep. He's got a great arm. He's going to go deep now. You've held, you've held on the football. Well, that's a surprise. That's an upset right there. Thank you, Coach. All right. Keith. Uh, All right, Steve. I love that. Steve I love Davis. that coming. <laughs> Talking to Barry Switzer. And here are our numbers at halftime in the ball game. Oklahoma. Oklahoma leads in first down and in yardage. And of course, in scored. And you notice that no passing by Oklahoma. That pass was considered a fumble. Excuse me, I mean a lateral. Yeah, the one they completed to Rhymes, when Rhymes ran off the nine yards, they called that a lateral. So no forward passing yardage by Oklahoma in the ball game. It's 14 to three for the Sooners. Texas will get the ball to start the second half. And Oklahoma has, on uh, now two occasions that we've seen them uh, this year have been willing to give the ball away to the opposition. They did it at Southern California. They did it here at Texas and sure did pay off for them here at Texas when they recovered the fumble and took it in from 16 yards and three plays. That's Herky Walls right now. You're looking at who is deep man for Texas with Jitterfields and Johnny Walker on each side of him about five yards upfield and Michael Keeling now the big junior out of Dallas is going to kick it off. He's the barefooted kicker for Oklahoma. Not a bad day to be prowling around barefooted right now because it's quite comfortable about oh the high 70s and the wind is relatively quiet though once in a while it gusts some and starts stirring things around 14 to 3 Texas uh, rather Oklahoma over Texas as a result of three Texas fumbles two of them leading to touchdowns and the kickoff by Keeling goes sailing way on through the end zone and the Longhorns are going to open up at their own 20. John Truitt is a defensive end for the University of Oklahoma. He is a 201 pounder. Bob Slater, one of those sophomore tackles at 249. Johnny Lewis, the nose guard, 232. Rick Bryan is the other defensive tackle at 244. Steve Whaley, defensive end at 210 pounds. Linebacker Thomas Benson and Jackie Ship. But here's the first play of the second half. McIver turns and pitches it back to Jam Jones, and he got a big block over there and turns the corner, and the man that helped him out was his fullback, Carl Robinson. He chopped down the Oklahoma pursuer and turned Jam Jones upfield. The defensive secondary for the Oklahoma Sooners. We're still trying to get our act together here. Daryl Sonja, junior cornerback. Uh, Varian Walker, 
is the other corner. He's a sophomore out of LaPorte, Texas. Gary Lowell from Sherman, Texas. And Dwight Train out of Miami, Florida. Second down and three. And they go to that eye back again. And Jones runs it up for a Texas first down up at the 33. Johnny Lewis, the nose guard, made the tackle. And Jam Jones now on 14 carries has picked up 70 yards. Those last two carries were from unbalanced line, meaning that they pull one tackle over to the left to give him an extra block that Oklahoma did not adjust. The coaches are trying to get word in right now. Texas has not had uh, particularly good field position in each of their possessions. And then that plus the mistakes. They're behind on the scoreboard. Jones sticks his head in the crowd that time. And uh, takes a lick or two. Same offensive unit starting for Texas as started the ball game. Same people up in the backfield as well as up front. Second down and nine. For the Longhorns, the ball is uh, just over their own 34 yard line. Balance strong to the left side of the open side of the field, and Jam Jones is going to run it that way. One man missed him in his own backfield. He gets past him. He gets some yardage out of it as he runs the football up to the 43, and that's close to another Texas first down. Once again, Oklahoma moved over, but the strong safety uh, Lowell did not support quick enough. Robinson got the key block and opened up a little bit of a crease for Jones to turn up inside for another Texas first down. One of the features of the I formation is that fullback really fundamentally is a blocking back. He has to be willing and enjoy blocking for the tailback on practically every play. This time they're strong to the open side to the right side and they stay with the tailback or the I back Jam Jones. John Truitt is the man that gets him number 41. Mike Riley who started the last time we saw Oklahoma at that defensive end position is not here. Out of Carson, California, a sophomore is playing there. Keith, interesting enough, on the last play, they ran the cutback that Southern Cal used against Oklahoma, a play that John Robinson found from Indiana, put it in, and scored against Oklahoma with it. Second down and short six. McIver, back to throw it, goes over the middle with it, and it's incomplete. Incomplete to McCloney, Maurice McCloney. Coming across the middle, the ball was thrown behind him. McIver is now two for eight, 25 yards. McIver has a very strong arm. In fact, some of the people when he enrolled at Texas compared him to Joe Namath in ability. He has great arm, good speed, size, but hasn't really developed as much as a, as a quarterback passer as they had hoped. Third down, five and a half or so from the 48. McIver straight back. He's got McCloney wide open and he hits him this time. And McCloney may go. Inside the 10, out of bounds at the four. Benson saved it for Oklahoma. What a tremendous play. When McCloney goes across the middle and catches the ball, watch from the top of your screen. You're going to see Donnie Little, who played quarterback, make the key block. Number one. Now McCloney's going to catch the ball right here. Let's watch from the left of your screen. You're going to see Little come across number one right up to, well, he can't quite see it. He makes the key block right there, number one, that springs McCloney down to the four. 49-yard pickup, and it's first and goal to go. Jam Jones. He gets maybe two. That's the same kind of pattern, pretty much, Frank, that Southern California exercised against Oklahoma Deep in the second over half. Middle. There's the key block right there. Little was a quarterback for three years. The starter volunteered to move the wide receiver and shows what a heads-up football player that he is. Was Keith the key pass, the one right deep over the middle behind the linebacker, with the back occupying the linebackers up close. Gain of about a yard on that carry, just inside the three. Jones again and stopped at the one. That is running through that much. <laughs> it 
that level at those angles is sort of like trying to drive your truck through a field of stumps. Well, it's even tougher than that when you try to cut back without any power, and that's what Jones did. He turned back and he lost his power trying to cut back to the weak side. On the goal line, there's no gap to cut back. You can expect an Oklahoma man in every one of them. This Texas possession started on their own 20. This is the 10th play. It's third down and goal to go from the one. Jones. Touchdown. Once again, the touchdown key block by the tight end and the fullback, letting Jones go right over the top for the touchdown. Very good call. Allegra for the extra point try. It is good. So the Texas Longhorns open up the second half with an 80-yard touchdown drive and 10 plays. And they're in the hunt now as the scoreboard reads 14 to 10. And we're ready to go with a kickoff now. As Texas will put it to Oklahoma. And there's the man that scored the touchdown. For the Texas Longhorns, Jan Jones. Number 34 is Alvin Ross on the left. 14 is Rod Pegues on the right. Texas held that football for four minutes and five seconds as Allegra kicks it off. It's going toward Ross at the four. Sticks his head down and bullies his way out to about the 22. Here's a look at the big Texas defensive people now. Eric Collins, 225 pounds. Kenneth Sims, 270. Mark Weber, 240. Kika Diala, 235 pounds. Linebackers, Bruce Schultz, 6'6", 240. Doug Shankle in there at 6 feet 2, 222. Jeff Lighting is at 235, 6'4". Big rangy. Strong fellows. 10-49 to play in the third quarter. A 14-10 ball game. The Sooners lead by four. Offside. Receiving team on the kickoff. Will kickoff over. All right. They'll march it up five yards toward the Oklahoma end zone. And they'll re-kick it. I didn't see that penalty flag flying around. Keith, I think that's good strategy. He can kick the ball deep and give Oklahoma a chance to run, but also a chance to fumble. Yep. Well, Allegra's got a good luck. He's kind of an interesting story, you know. Yep. Uh, he went to school in, what, Montana? Uh, was born in Mexico, grew up in Shelton, Washington, transferred from Montana down here. Left the folks in Montana a little grumpy about it, but he's a good kicker. I guess you thought he's the third starter from outside the state of Texas on the Texas football team. Jones and Lighting being the other two. Lighting the linebacker, Jones the running back. Tells you something about the quality of the high school football they play now. Very definitely. There's about 100 schools recruit in the state of Texas each year. There's been some grumbling where there have been instances that have become a little overly zealous about it. <laughs> Generally speaking, they do it very well. This time for Peggy's. Yeah, he fumbled it. Oh, and Barry Switcher now is looking around for somebody's thumb to stick in the dike. Vance Bedford is a cornerback. Mike Hatchett, the other cornerback. The safeties are Bobby Johnson, brother of Johnny, and William Graham. Oh, how Oklahoma hates this. This is the worst field position the Sooners have had in the ball game. Just, just took his eyes off the ball, was going to try to run with it before he caught it. It's on the seven for the Sooners. They break the bone here, but they still give it off to Wilson. And he fumbled the ball, and Texas has it. I don't believe it. It's Woo! the first fumble in the ball game, but holy cow, look where it happened. When the momentum changes in college. Boy, that is some kind of a turnaround. Oh, my goodness alive. Let's look and see if we can determine what happened. 
actually. He never had it. No, he never did get the ball. He, he thought the quarterback was going to keep it and go outside because of the read on the defensive tackle. Just inside the seven, Texas Jam Jones. Inside the five to about the three with the ball. Isn't it amazing this college football? One team can look so poor for a while, but when they got the tradition of Texas or Oklahoma, they can come right back. They don't stay down very long. Not good football players, good programs. They're going to officially call this possession on the six. Second down and goal to go. Walker's in motion. Jones has it. And the Sooners get him back at the five. Johnny Lewis made a big play in there for the Oklahoma defense, the nose guard. Well, when the nose guard comes all the way to the outside and helps on the tackle, you know that they're fired up. It is third and goal to go. The ball is in between the four-yard hash mark and the five-yard line. There are the two coaches. Oh, agony, agony, agony. Oh, how true that is, Keith. Third and goal. McIver got a man, missed him. Johnny Walker. He had to throw it dead perfect to hit Walker with it. And on the run, couldn't do it. Well, you have to turn around and give Oklahoma defense credit. Three Absolutely. times they stopped Southern Cal in similar situations. Not that deep, but in that third quarter, remember, Keith? Yep. Boy, that character, that's what it takes. Again, winning tradition. Allegra is now in for a field goal try. He's hit a 34-yarder. This is for from 22. Old is good. The kick is good. That's a look at the Metroplex. Picture coming from the Goodyear Blimp Enterprise. Dallas there in the background, the skyline of Big D, and the Longhorns now just one point away from the Oklahoma Sooners at 14 to 13. We'll kick it off, and Buster Rhymes is deep this time, along with Alvin Ross. Kick is very high. It goes to Ross at the one. They'll get him to the 19. There, the Sooners will go to work at 9-11 to play in the third quarter. Keith, I didn't think... I didn't think he protected that ball very much either. He was waving it with his arm. I know Oklahoma was scared on that. Phelps comes out for Oklahoma. We have not seen Daryl Shepard. We think that's one reason they may not be fumbling as much. Changing quarterbacks can have effect and cause fumbles. I haven't seen that work for anybody yet. But I have quarterback been. system. Philosophically, I'm against it. Wilson. Oh, he takes a wallop, doesn't he? Doug Shank. Second down and eight. For the Sooners, Phelps leaves it outside for Rhymes. Buster's got some daylight. Got a first down for the Sooners. That time, Buster put it away and ran with authority. And it looks like uh, various switchers stimulated him some, doesn't it? This, we're going to see a new play. Watch this a counter option. He's going to fake to Wilson up the middle. This is the first time they've run this play, and this is the first time they've gotten outside cleanly with Winners, number 40, making the key block, leading Rhymes, number four, for the big game. And Winners a good blocker. Yes, he is. A fine, fine football player. 38-yard line. Give it inside to Wilson. And Stanley runs into a up at the 40. Eight at 8 10 to play in the third quarter. 14 13 ball game. The Sooners leading the Longhorns. Some of the games uh, that are scheduled out on the West Coast today, with USC being ranked number one, playing Arizona. Second quarter, Penn State number two, leading Boston College. And Pitt over West Virginia at halftime, 7 0. That game's up at Morgantown, and the Mountaineers are tough up there. North Carolina out well. Second down and eight. Little movement on the left side of the Oklahoma line. That's caused by the motion. As Michigan State pulled out ahead of Michigan again, Keith. Six, 17 to 16. Mm. Clemson over Virginia in the second quarter. Referee is Ken Faulkner of the Southwest Conference. 
He'll define the penalty here. False start. Offense. Second down. That's what the third or fourth time they've been called for that. On the last play, they had a man in motion, which delays the snap count, and the lineman just wouldn't wait. They were going after. Ball is at the 35. We're at his second down and 13. Phelps back to throw. Gets it off, and it's too high. Intended for Jim Rockford. See that number 51, Bruce Schultz over there, is helping defend the strong linebacker. Rockford is 5'10", 170, Schultz 6'6", 240. Now that's a mismatch. At the, <laughs> as strong as you can have one, but Schultz has the speed to go with that 6'6 height. Plays that strong linebacker, and boy, he was underneath the coverage, forcing Phelps to throw it high. Other scores from across the country now beginning to come in. Jim Lampley and Dave Dowles will have a complete summary for you when the game is done. David Carter now is a split in for Oklahoma. There's a quarterback throw again, and Kelly Phelps is loose. Gets a block from Grayson, and he's out of bounds at the Texas 36. 29-yard gallop as Bobby Johnson took him down. Holy cow! What a call! Third, remember, it's third down and 10, and Oklahoma can't throw the ball very good. Look at the hole because the linemen were eager, but watch the key play. Watch Grayson number 12. Sets up the block and blocks the half back before Johnson finally makes the play and then he throws him out of bounds and Oklahoma fans do not like that. I'll tell you, Johnson's lucky he didn't get a flag. Yes, but Phelps was already out of bounds when he really right. went on through with it. Sooners first down, Texas 36, 720 to play in the third quarter and Phelps comes down. He lobs it off to Buster Rhymes and Rhymes slides down a shankle. Sort of got him with a shirt tail and jerked him off balance. Gained about four yards on that play. Indiana and Iowa even at the first quarter. Aiden Fry is picking up some interesting things down in Iowa City these days. And Notre Dame leading Florida State in the first quarter. Keith, I can't help but mention it again. The tradition of these football teams coming right back from near disaster, picking up the momentum and coming right back at them. Oklahoma and Texas. Second man, winners inside the 30 to the 28. He's going to be two yards short of his first down. Oakland closed out the American League West last night, beating Kansas City. Here's Phelps sending the ball inside to Wilson again. And uh, I don't think there's any question but what, uh, when Stanley Wilson gets a football, the, the fellows wearing the uh, orange shirts, their eyes get as big as a plate because they are looking for him. Well, they feel like they've got to stop Wilson and they've put stunning in the middle. That's what was giving them the big hole, giving Oklahoma, that is, the big holes, the guard and tackles were stunning out of the picture. They're playing straight now. Seemed to have a little better chance of stopping Wilson. He hadn't done much up the middle. Despite that, though, Wilson's picked up 81 yards on 22 carries. Oklahoma's going to have to take a timeout. And the uh, clock stops at 5.48 to play in the third quarter. The football is down at the 27 of Texas, where it is fourth down and about a yard. Only Pizza Hut's new piece of real estate in this part of the country is that little margin right there, just a little over a yard. Fourth down and about a yard plus a foot. Fourth down. Last time the Oklahoma Sooners tried it, Texas stopped them. Oh, they do it again. That Sims that time. Oh, my goodness. You don't think that won't jack up a football team and Stanley Wilson is hurt. Watch it again. Sam's number 77 going to run around the block and come back and reach over and grab quarterback Phelps. I think Barry would like to have this play back on short yardage. Watch the play. It's a reverse turn option play, giving the defense time to pursue out at the line and the weak side come and make the play. I bet he wishes he had that call back. Yep. Stanley Wilson did trot off the field, but he is hobbled. Got a leg twisted, looked like underneath that stack. And now it is at the 32 of Texas. First down Longhorns. They trail by a point, 14 to 13. They give the football to Jim Jones, and the Oklahoma defense comes out snarling too. 
on the last possession, Texas came out an unbalanced line, picked up two first downs, running the sweep. Oklahoma did not adjust. Then they hit the pass and took it in. And you got a procedure call here against the Longhorns. So Texas came back with unbalanced line, the first down, and it did not work. Nose guard Johnny Lewis talking to the referee, Ken Faulkner, and they will take it. The ball is back now at the 20. Seven. And the handoff goes to Jones, and Jones just keeps on hammering. He took a hit right about the line of scrimmage from Sherdell Brethet. But he kept on pounding and he got it out to about the 34. One thing the coaches say, well, good running back, BYOB, meaning be your own blocker. And that's exactly what Jones did on Brethet. He went right over him for the game. Some some of the some of the places that I've been, that means something else. <laughs> Bring your own bottle. <laughs> <laughs> 34, second down and eight. <laughs> McIver throws it short. Carl Robinson, fullback. Up across the 45 to the 47. First down, Texas. Jerry Sanders made the tackle for Oklahoma. Hey, that's what we're looking for for Texas. If you're a Texas fan, throw into the back short. Let the decoys go deep. If the linebackers drop deep, hit your back. That's the mark of a good quarterback. Sanders finally makes the tackle. Robinson has caught three for 38. Pretty good blocking on the left side of that line. John Truitt made the tackle. A little bit of a misdirection play, meaning that Jones stepped to the right, hoping that linebackers would take a step and came back to the left. Made a nice gain, eight yards. Jones has now crossed the 100-yard mark, 24 carries, 105 yards, and it is the 16th time in his career at Texas that Jim Jones has run for 100 yards or more in a game. Been very, very impressive. Good hard-nosed runner with power and authority. Second down and three from the Oklahoma 46. Jones again, and he's got the first down. When you can mix up power running and good passing, that's what Southern Cal does so effectively. And that's what Texas has done on the last drive and are doing right now. Why is that effective? It keeps the defense off balance. As we look at Ricky McIver's record today, four completions out of 11. 81 yards, one big 49 yarder. Ball is on the Oklahoma 42. First down, Texas. Give it to the fullback, Robinson. Oh, he almost popped out of there. I mean to tell you, he almost popped out of there, and if he had, it would have been see you later. John Truett's the man that stopped him. He surprised the Oklahoma defense with the defense get the key of the tail back in the eye. A little counter play, pulling the guard around uh, Dawson to make the key block. Robinson, number 44, running with quick feet, good power, excellent game. You didn't see any white shirts between there and no, the goal line either. A lot of hole they had. Second down and two. From the 34, Jam Jones with it. Can't get there this time. There is a big play by Bob Slater. Defensive tackle. Oh, Keith, I know that uh, Akers would like to have that play back, just as Switzer would like to have the play back on fourth down. Why did I say that? It was a delayed counter play on short yardage. You just don't run delayed counter plays on short yardage. Don't run any, ki any kind of delayed play. No, on short no, it's not very good. It's not very good. It's a hit or miss play and a bad percentage play is the reason. It's inconsistent. You want to keep the ball. Third down and right about four. Donnie Little is the man at the top of the picture. I was just seeing we up there. Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. The and quarterback changed the snap count. Changed the rhythm. Changed the count. Oh, let's see what he, what he calls it on Texas or Oklahoma. Sooners anticipating. Oh, I'd like to see that again because you can see McIver, the quarterback, bobble his shoulders. Like, 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 like the guy to the quarterback. He bobbles his shoulders, and when he changed the snap count, Oklahoma, getting on that rhythm, jumped offside. Oh, that's good play. 
The penalty gives Texas a first down just short of the Oklahoma 30. Robinson, the fullback, caught at the 29. That's Freddie Akers. He also was a, played in Arkansas, was a teammate of Barry Switzer. Played on the 1958-59 Arkansas football team. Very fine football coach. Two linebackers, Rathet 47, Ship 49, were the people that stepped in there. Stop Robinson for a yard gain. Second down, nine. he has got to throw the ball. Going to. Can't. Steve Whaley, another big defensive play for Oklahoma. Senior out of Cleveland, Oklahoma. He's not all that big. He's 6'3", 210 pounds, but he is quick. Well, it's a play-action pass on long yardage. No, not a single defensive player is paying any attention to the play-action pass because it's long yardage, and uh, the pass protection breaks down. When McIver takes one look, no receiver, you can believe that's all you get on a play-action pass, one look. Nearing the end of the third quarter, with Oklahoma leading Texas 14-13. to Third down. And about 16. McIver runs out, gets it away. He's got a man wide open. McCourney, touchdown, Texas. by McIver I'll tell you it looked like Bob Slater had him behind the line of scrimmage and the Oklahoma defensive people were all coming McIver broke away and by that time McCloney was I mean lonesome in that end zone the kick is up by Allegra and it is good with 32 seconds to play in the third quarter the Texas Longhorns lead for the first time in the ball game by a score of 20 to 14. A 36-yard touchdown pass. Let's see what happens on McCloney, who's going down. Remember, the quarterback is going to scramble. He fakes the block. He goes deep. Actually, number three, Walker lets him go. But where is the safety man? There he comes up. But that's a mistake. That's Crane, number 33, made the critical error. Now the momentum has really shifted. And Texas has scored on all three of the third quarter possessions. Electra kicks it off. Buster Ryan at the three. To the 21. When you think about coming from behind, you think about winning football tradition, Oklahoma, as we look at the nine-play drive, what a beautiful thing for, for Texas coming from behind to go ahead. But Oklahoma came from behind against Nebraska to win the championship, go to the Orange Bowl, and they came from behind against Nebraska. Excuse me, I mean against Florida State. Wonder why Texas didn't consider going for two to give them an eight-point lead rather than a six. They're going to make Oklahoma throw for a touchdown, too. And yeah. uh, you can see the Texas defense is just swarming out there now. As Phelps on that keeper got about a yard. That's the time remaining in the third quarter. That ought to be the last play of the third quarter. What a quarter for Texas. Well, it's over. So we've played 45 minutes, 15 to go. And Oklahoma and Texas, it's 2014 for the Horns. We'll continue with it. After this, commercial matches and a word from our local station. Why Texas didn't go for two? It would have put them on multiples of seven, and that's what coaches want. Outside it goes to Ryan. Buster slides down at the 21. The stats and how Texas not only trimmed Oklahoma's lead, but they went ahead of Look at them, the two key factors, passing, zero yardage for Oklahoma, 123, but I want to point out, 131 rushing, 123 passing, that type of yardage puts the defense in trouble. That's what's happened to Oklahoma this quarter. Rockford coming wide for the Sooners. 
It's third down and eight. Oh, he's in trouble. Phelps is decked inside the 15, back at the 14, and the horns were loaded up and coming. Three of them got in. That's what we call a blitz. And when they blitz from the outside, Oklahoma is not going to be able to protect it. They're just not a passing team. If you don't work on the passing game, you're not going to protect it. Our feeling is in the punt. Turkey Walls goes deep for Texas. No pressure. Didn't get all of it. Sliced it. Shanked it off. Out of bounds. And they're going to mark it up there around the outside the 40 at the 42 27 yard punt. Right now, the Texas Longhorns trying to beat Oklahoma for a third successive year, leading 20 to 14. Have the football. First down just outside the Sooner 42. Goes to Jan Jones and he goes up the middle. And he gets it to the 38 for four yards. At Southern Mississippi, Alabama. And I, I'm telling you right now, don't be surprised because Southern Mississippi is a good, solid, tough football team. They have a great coach in Bobby Collins, and he's got some fine football players. He's won the Mississippi the State of Mississippi Battle Con Championship, what I'm trying to say three years ago. Second down and six. Double tight end arrangement now for Texas. It's run it over the left side. And Jam Jones on that second effort is close to a first down. Oh, he just wouldn't go down. Once he ran out of block and he just kept going, Oklahoma could not get him down before he came close to making the first down. 28 carries, 117 yards for Jam Jones. That dies Auburn bunch getting it going, and so's Nebraska in the first quarter against. The Buffaloes of Colorado. Third in the yard. Kick it in the middle and looks like they've got a first down. Good surge over behind uh, the right side of the line of Texas, Dawson, and Taos, their great All American tackle, number 79. AJ. Takes it in there and gets the first down. And clock stops with 12:33 to play in the ball game. Russell for New York today, and I'm not just exactly sure who's the pitcher going to be for Milwaukee as Carl Robinson takes it for Texas and goes from the 32 down close to the 26. Now, big right-hander Vukovic, the top pitcher for Milwaukee, struck down by tonsillitis, laryngitis, a high fever. And when I left uh, around midnight last night, the guess was that Moose Haas. Oz would be starting for Milwaukee in tonight's game, this afternoon's game. The strategy for Texas right here is two tight ends, power football, trying to eat up the clock and maybe get another touchdown. Second down and four. Middle is wide. They're not going to put it up. They give it to John Walker. And Walker, the eye back, is close to the 22. Oklahoma, they've got to go inside the 22 to get the first down. Well, the Texas offensive line has six seniors and uh, one sophomore. They've been playing together for three and a half years. They have good football players. They have the quick feet and they have the muscle. And they're showing it right here. Need about a foot for the first down. Third and a foot. Top to the 19. Well, that's another Texas first down. And we must remember that a field goal for Oklahoma, for Texas would put Oklahoma pretty much out of reach. At least two scores. You have to get two scores to win. So I'm sure that's in Texas thinking. We're going to march it now. If we don't get a touchdown, we'll go for the field goal right in front of the goalpost. First downs in this half. Texas has nine. The Sooners have two. Sooners led 14 to three. And it is Walker carrying again inside the 15. Oh, they're just gobbling oh. it up now, aren't they? Yeah, when you pitch the ball back to a good running back like this and let him just have the freedom to run anywhere he wants to, as we see the first downs for this half, there's the dominant Texas statistics, 9-2. to two, But the offensive line are doing a magnificent job controlling, getting the surge. Dolly Little again goes wide. 
And McIver pitches it to Jones. Ooh. Leaves his feet. And when he went flying, he went for four. One that thing, may be another first down. It right? is, Keith. And one thing that uh, is, is, sh is showing here is the fact that there's no white shirts getting any penetration. There's no penetration. The Texas line have moved in tight as they bring the chains in, but it looks from here like it is a first down. Well, I remember, too, late in the ball game against Southern California, Oklahoma defense didn't get a lot of penetration either. It must be close. Oh, that it's much. Short. Yep. Third down. That's right. If you don't get penetration against the high formation, you've had it. You're out, you're out of business. You're out of business. In fact, there's too much freedom to run if you, you get him all the way across the line because you, you have no penetration. In deference, however, to the Sooner defense, they've had to play a lot yes, of football here in the second half. You do get tired. Third. And short. I mean, short being about a half a foot. And McIver should have it. It is first and goal to go Texas from the Oklahoma eight. Jam Jones to the five. Now the strategy, hold on to the football, protect it at all costs, keep it right in front of the goal post, knowing that a touchdown or a field goal pretty much puts the ball game out of reach for Oklahoma unless they can come up with some big plays. Jones now with 126 yards on 31 carries. He's a workhorse. Yes, All I backs are really. Yeah, they have to be. They have to love it and carry the football, protect it, running, traffic, do everything. Nine minutes to play in the ball game. Second and goal. Jones again. Looks like about the four. You can bet your dollar that they'll run it right up the middle again because the ball is about where they would place it for an extra point. Time rapidly becoming a principal ally of the Longhorn. If they want to throw the football, they obviously will tell McIver, get rid of it, don't take the loss. If the receivers are covered, throw it away. But I would guess they'd run left off tackle, set it up right between the goal posts if it's not a touchdown. tight end finally got a chance to see it <laughs> and he was all alone well it's a good fake and Oklahoma was determined to stop the run leaving the coverage uh, passes wide open Allegra's kick is good you've got eight minutes and 14 seconds to play in the football game and the Texas lead is grown now to 27 to 14 with this play you see the fake meaning the back has to sell it to the defense McIver just sprints out. If he's going to be rushed, you just overthrow it, incomplete, and kick the field goal. Last eight minutes ought to be pretty exciting. We'll be right back. Oh, Texas now with 2.16 to play. Owns the football. First down at the Oklahoma 22. And I think the air has gone out of the balloon. McIver is dropped back around the 26. What does this game mean for Oklahoma? Keith, it's been four weeks since they've won a ball game, including their off week. Has, has that happened in, in the last three or four decades? I doubt it. I doubt it. Well, certainly not since Barry Switzer's no. been there. Switzer's the winningest percentage-wise football coach in America. He still got his conference schedule ahead of him with just a tie, but he's got some good teams in the league. Missouri, Nebraska, Kansas. In the backfield, that's Rodney Tate out of Beggs, Oklahoma. He's another Oklahoman who came south to play in Austin. And I remember a year ago, Tate was very much involved in the Texas offense, but he'd been quiet so far this year, his first appearance this afternoon. Of course, he substituted, I think, most of the time for Jam Jones last year, but Jam is, is well this year. And Young Walker is much bigger and seems to be doing better as the alternate back for, Jay, for Jones. Tate. Got about a yard. Call it third down and nine. 
And there's the time remaining in the game. Half of the stadium is empty. Folks on the red side. They pitch it back to the eye back again, and Rodney Tate, building up ahead of steam as he sweeps to the right, takes it inside the 20 to about the 17. Well, the most valuable player for Texas, you got to call it Jan Jones. Had a heck of a day for AJ. And I tell you, the young man who plays defensive end, making his first start for Oklahoma, John Truitt, played an outstanding ball game for the Sooners. So the two universities will receive from Chevrolet a thousand dollars each in the names of those two players for Jones today 36 carries at 134 yards and John Truett played an inspiring ball game at defensive end less than 20 seconds now as Tate carries this ought to be the last play of the ball game look out it's going to be touchdown Texas can you believe it with 10 seconds to go Rodney Tate reverses his direction, cuts it back against the grade, and takes it in for six. Well, I think those faces there. Do they tell the story? Oh my, do yeah. they ever reflect I'm the you, essence of sport, huh? I said it earlier, Keith. When you lose this football game, for a while, it's not death. But I'm telling you, for the coach, <laughs> it's near, it's the next thing. It's like it. Yes. <laughs> I don't doubt it. Oh my goodness. 34 to 14, Texas. I've never coached. Believe me, but it I does. I think I know the feeling. Yes. Watch tape. Well, when you've got speed, it means that you can start in one direction. And if you get in trouble, if you've really got speed, which Tate does, he's about a 9-4 sprinter. Watch him just outrun everybody in for the touchdown. And is he a happy young man? Well, it'll be a long trip emotionally for Oklahoma home. For Texas, a short trip. Four out of five for Freddie Akers deep over Oklahoma. There are the Chevrolet most valuable players in the ball game. I don't think anybody in the world expected it to turn into this kind of a margin for Texas. So there's a lot of folks who felt that Texas was ready to play a big ball game. It's the most Texas points against Oklahoma since 1970. 41 to 9 that year. So you have 10 ticks remaining on the clock. The 1970 game you mentioned was the game that uh, Chuck Fairbanks switched to the wishbone offense during his off week before the contest. Allegra kicks it off. Ross is looking at it and lets it go out of bounds. So the clock doesn't roll. We've still got 10 seconds to play. There are only two teams ahead of Texas in the national polls this week. Those teams big, the University of Southern California, they're playing Arizona today. And Abounds. Penn State. Kicking team, replay the kick. They'll penalize them five and do it again. Penn State, last we heard, was winning rather handily. So it'll be up to the voters in the polls as to whether or not they want to move anybody around. But I doubt it. I think unless something happens in the USC-Arizona game, that would be untoward. Or unexpected at least uh, then your top three may remain the same but it's well, been a solid performance by the Texas Longhorn and Texas goes to Arkansas next week in Fayetteville to take on the Razorbacks and uh, Oklahoma plays Kansas at home and Kansas is undefeated going into today's football game Sooners have got some regrouping to do it's a sailing kick and it's picked up by Ross back on the two down he goes up around the 19 and that'll do it. No, nope, doesn't need it. No, it stops the clock. Five. Yep. yep. He's got one more. I don't really know how to assess this. I know that this Oklahoma team has the ability to come back and be a factor in that big eight conference race well keith their, their defense is starting seven sophomores and i don't know of any football team in america that can really be great 
with that many young yeah, players. The offense is the one that's making all the mistakes. Well, I agree with that. I agree with that. But your defense is also inexperienced, makes it tough. Kelly Phelps wants to try one deep. And it's going to be dropped, knocked down, and the ball game is over. William Graham could have intercepted it, but it really didn't make any difference. As Freddie Akers, the staff of the Texas Longhorns, get a big win over Oklahoma 34 14.